Well, the issue of where the pandemic began and how it began has never really gone away, but it's back center stage because US intelligence officials are now redoubling efforts to investigate the origins of COVID-19. The orders come from President Biden. Here's the statement. It says the intelligence community is split on whether the virus came from human contact with an infected animal or emerged in a laboratory accident. You've probably heard the laboratory theory before. It's that the virus emerged from here, the Institute of Virology in Wuhan. This is one of China's top virus research labs. And we already know that the city became the first epicenter of the virus, but the questions are, where did it originally come from? Some believe the blab is where it started. Here's the White House spokesperson, Karine Jean-Pierre, on this new investigation. The president is asking the U U.S. intelligence community, in cooperation with other elements of our government, to redouble efforts to collect and analyze information that could bring the world closer to a definitive conclusion on the origin of the virus and deliver a report to him again in 90 days. Well, let's work through what we do know about the origins of COVID. Scientists largely agree it came from animals. It's thought most likely that that animal was a bat. That was the case with the SARS virus. And either it was transferred directly from a bat to humans or via an intermediary animal. We also know in February 2020, a group of 27 prominent public health scientists published this letter saying, we stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. The conspiracy theory they're referring to is one that the virus was man-made or was engineered in this Wuhan lab. We're not going to talk about that today. There's no evidence that took place. What we do know is that recent coronaviruses have emerged in humans that originally originated in animals. We mentioned SARS, connection to bats. Then there was MERS, which is thought to have come from camels. And that jump from animal to human can happen naturally. Professor Dale Fisher says it remains the most likely explanation. The evidence uh, about a more natural species jump is that this is how it's happened for, for centuries, especially over the last 40 or 50 years, that viruses mutate and they jump species. And, and we just haven't found that link yet. But let's be clear, so far efforts to discover the natural source of COVID-19 have failed. So let's look at the laboratory leak theory in a bit more detail and how it's being investigated in the US. At the beginning, China said the virus originated here, a wet market in Wuhan. It said the virus probably jumped from wildlife in the market to humans. Now, though, that's not thought to be the most likely explanation because many of the first reported cases had no known links to the market, which brings us to Wuhan's virology lab. We know the lab studies coronaviruses by collecting bats from around China. At the start of the pandemic, one Chinese scientist wrote that the virus probably originated from a laboratory in Wuhan, but that report was then removed. Then in 2020, the Washington Post reported that two years before the pandemic, US officials visited the lab and sent official warnings back to Washington about inadequate safety. The theory is that while carrying out studies, a human in the lab was accidentally infected with the virus. Professor Ravi Gupta picks up the story. Of course, SARS uh, could have spilled over from uh, an animal reservoir, uh, just like other coronaviruses. But uh, the hypothesis also exists that, uh, that uh, a lab uh, in Wuhan that had one of the few high-level containment laboratories in China was also working with coronaviruses from bats and other species. And therefore, that there is a, a realistic possibility that, um, that one of these viruses uh, had managed to escape in, in, in some way. So it should be explored properly, in, in our view. Now, I want to be clear. Many scientists think it's just coincidental that Wuhan has a lab that studies viruses. Here's Professor Fisher again. The, the evidence for the lab really is that there is a lab. Um, there, there's nothing else particularly stronger about that. Well, the idea COVID escaped from this lab also gained further attention this week because of a number of US media reports, including this Wall Street Journal article on an as yet unseen US intelligence report. The journal says three researchers from China's Wuhan Institute of Virology became sick enough in November 2019 that they sought hospital care. They had symptoms consistent with both COVID-19 and common seasonal illness, it says. Now, to be clear, those cases would have been one month before any formal cases of COVID-19 were officially reported. 
China, for its part, denies any sickness among staff at the lab. And then we have America's top infectious diseases expert, who, through the last few months, has tended to dispute the lab theory and is now saying this. No, I'm not convinced uh, about that. I think that we should continue to investigate what went on in China until we find out, to the best of our ability, exactly what happened. Certainly, the people who've investigated say that it likely was the emergence from an animal reservoir that then infected individuals, but it could have been something else. We should also add the origins of this virus have already been investigated. In February, the World Health Organization sent a team to Wuhan, and this was the joint WHO Chinese report. It said a lab leak was, quote, extremely unlikely and concluded that COVID most likely spread naturally to humans through an animal. Well, phase two of that investigation is starting soon, but the WHO says it needed more research. And at the time, the WHO general direct, director general said he had not ruled any explanation out. Some questions have been raised as to whether some hypotheses have been discarded. Having spoken with some members of the team, I wish to confirm that all hypotheses remain open and require further analysis and studies. Now, at the time, that WHO investigation was criticised by the US. It said China had withheld information about the virus outbreak from those WHO investigators, and they voiced concern that China co-authored the report. In February, the White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said it is imperative that this report be independent with expert findings free from intervention or alteration by the Chinese government. And the White House says its new investigation has been ordered because of a lack of transparency from China. We will continue to pushing for a stronger multi multilateral investigation into the origins of the virus in China. And we will continue to press China to participate in a full, transparent, evidence-based international investigation with the needed access to get to the bottom of a virus that's taken more than three million lives across the globe. And if that's the American perspective, here's the Chinese perspective. Beijing has always rejected this laboratory theory. And here's how China is responding to this new investigation today. Some people in the U.S. are spreading conspiracy theories and disinformation, such as a laboratory leak. This is a very disrespectful approach to the scientific spirit and research findings of the WHO expert team and undermines the global solidarity to fight the virus. And that response is yet more evidence that the origins of COVID-19 have become intensely political. We have to see all of this in the context of U.S.-China relations, which more broadly are tense. Here's our correspondent in China, Stephen McDonnell. Here in the country, which saw the first coronavirus clusters, the government has vigorously denied any responsibility for the pandemic. Any theory at all which has anything to do with a lab leak has been dismissed out of hand. That's because if there has been a lab leak, naturally, the authorities here would bear some of the responsibility. The problem for the rest of the world is that the hunt for the origins of the virus has become so overtly political. In the United States, President Biden announces a new report into the origins of the coronavirus. Beijing goes on the attack. Here in the Chinese capital, Foreign Ministry spokesman Jali Jan ridiculed the idea that the same US intelligence agencies which spread misinformation about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq would now examine the origins of the coronavirus. And what we should note here is how this theory about the lab, the theory that a virus leaked from the lab in Wuhan, was once very much on the fringe of science, but it's now, certainly in the US, being seen as a mainstream possible explanation for the pandemic. This is uh, the fact checker at the Washington Post offering an explanation. Early efforts to spotlight a lab leak often got mixed up with speculation that the virus was deliberately created as a bioweapon. That made it easier for many scientists to dismiss the lab scenario as tin hat nonsense. Well, now the scientific community is saying there should be more investigations into the origins of COVID-19. Ravi Gupta was one of those who signed a letter calling for just that. It's become, become very difficult, um, even for scientists, to voice any doubts they may have for fear of being 
uh, seen as uh, as conspiracy theorists. But you know the the, the signatories on the letter you mentioned, uh, all of us are well respected scientists, and we uh, want to know the answer as scientists, not as uh, citizens of any particular country. Uh, and I think that's really important for people to understand that this is not about conspiracy theories, it's not about uh, wanting to blame. I want to speak to Maureen Miller, an infectious disease epidemiologist at Columbia University who's worked with a Chinese virologist who studies bat coronaviruses at the Wuhan Institute. Thank you very much for joining us on Outside Source. Do you think it's appropriate that Joe Biden asks for further investigations into this lab theory? I think it is appropriate that Joe Biden ask for additional research into the origins of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID. Uh, but I think it needs to be a much more comprehensive approach than is currently being highlighted. Right now, they're only focusing on the lab, which still most scientists in the United States believe is the least likely mechanism for the spread of SARS-CoV-2. Um, the most likely mechanism sounds like science fiction, but it's true. Likely is the case and has been the case for millennia um, that uh, viruses in animals spill over to humans and cause disease because humans have no immunity against these animal viruses. Of the 260 human viruses that are currently known, two thirds of them were originally animal viruses. This is the, all of the other uh, viruses that have caused uh, outbreaks and epidemics, and particularly in the 21st century, mm -hmm. They've all been caused by animals, and there's not been a debate about it. And while we bear that advice in mind, I was mentioning that you've worked with a Chinese virologist who, who worked at the Wuhan Institute. What do you make of those Americans who visited the Institute in advance of COVID-19 and are reported to have raised concerns about the safety protocols within that institute? Um, th that uh, I do not know that firsthand. I do know that there were some concerns and they're currently being uh, studied by virologists in the United States that uh, Sheng Li Shi was working with uh, coronaviruses, SARS-like coronaviruses in a biosafety two, level two uh, laboratory. Um, in the United States, it is standard to work with pathogens that could have pandemic potential to work in a BSL-3 laboratory. And if you're doing very serious work, to work in a BSL-4 laboratory. And I think that's the point that um, virologists who have signed on to the idea that we need to really investigate this lab at the cost of all else, I might add, mm -hmm. um, I think that is the information that they're hanging their hat on. But again, I worry that we're not going to really investigate mm -hmm. the, uh, the other likely and probably true scenario that it began in a bat. We have a bat that has 96% agreement with SARS-CoV-2. Mm -hmm. So it probably started in this bat, went to an intermediary animal, and then ended up in humans. We could potentially do pretty easy studies right now in China, in southern China, where that bat is found, um, to look, do uh, sero surveys, which is antibody testing on blood samples that have been stored in the hospitals and blood banks. Right now, we only have very select information from Wuhan, from the, um, from the WHO uh, investigation. They were only mm. limited to Wuhan. Chances are really good that this virus began in southern China, perhaps in Yunnan. Dr. Meadow, that's really helpful. Thanks for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.